birds humming. So if you watch the video, it's going to be very annoying, I'm sure. Um, another philosopher, I don't have on the syllabus, but since we have a, a little bit of time, um, unless you have questions on either Roger Scruton or Hannah Arendt, um, that I'd like to mention is Walter Kaufman. Uh, and uh, there are some friends of mine that are familiar with Walter Kaufman, but I'm surprised for the most part, most people uh, don't think of him. Uh, but why is he important? Well, um, he's another immigre from Germany uh, that uh, came at about the same time as Hannah Arendt. Um, but he hadn't studied philosophy in Germany except for one year in a Juden university uh, or a Jewish university that studied Jewish studies. But he was only uh, about 17 at the time. Uh, uh, in any case, uh, he became officially Jewish. He wasn't, but he, became, he, he converted to Judaism after the rise of the Third Reich, which is kind of interesting, since that's obviously a type of rebellion, uh, and some people would think pretty, pretty dumb, uh, you know, when, uh, right when the Reich is basically uh, starting to really uh, ratchet up uh, the hatred uh, uh, as part of, of the, the Nazi movement against the Jews, uh, that was kind of an odd thing for a young man to decide to become officially Jewish uh, at that time. But he also left uh, alone at 18 and came to the United States, went to Williams College, and then went to uh, Harvard, uh, got his PhD. Well, actually, before he went to Harvard, he ended up joining the military, uh, the United States military, and went back uh, to Germany uh, during the war as a translator, um, and that's kind of interesting. Uh, the same, same thing uh, happened with um, um, Henry Kissinger. Uh, Henry Kissinger uh, left Germany as a young man, went to high school and so on, but then joined uh, uh, the army in the United States and went to Germany as a translator, interrogator, uh, and then came back and went to Harvard uh, so they, who knows, they might have even been in the cl a class together. Uh, but after he graduated from Harvard, he ended up teaching at Princeton for over 30 years and publishing a series of books. And so here's what becomes interesting to me, that when I was a student in Westchester, uh, the uh, introduction I had to Hegel uh, didn't even dawn on me, but the introduction I had to Hegel was his translation of uh, the Phenomenology's preface and his, his book on Hegel. So basically, I ended up interpreting Hegel through his interpretation of Hegel. And that was because it was an assigned text uh, in my 19th century philosophy class uh, taught by Dr. Stanley Ryukas. Uh, so my introduction, my understanding of Hegel comes through his interpretation. And by the way, I could, I could also point out that that's not a standard interpretation, that actually there's a lot of people that disagree with his interpretations of uh, the things he translated from German philosophy. Another example is his book on Nietzsche. Uh, he's, uh, he was absolutely thrilled with Nietzsche while he was in Germany as a translator. He found a book uh, of, of Nietzsche's works in a bookstore uh, and started reading them and he was absolutely f fascinated. In fact, that's what really inspired him uh, to go back uh, uh, to school uh, and study philosophy was his interest in Nietzsche. Um, and so he did a lot of uh, translations of Nietzsche's works, as well as his, his explanations of Nietzsche. And uh, some of his contemporaries disagreed with his interpretations of Nietzsche, because at the time, uh, remember uh, um, Jennifer Ratner, uh, um, Rosen, Rosenberg, 
argued uh, um, uh, about how uh, Nietzsche's works, when they hit the United States, were interpreted as uh, um, uh, Hitler, basically, uh, as, as the philosophy of the Third Reich. Um, um, but Kaufman was the one that liked Nietzsche and basically transformed the way Americans thought about Nietzsche by making Nietzsche being much softer, much, much more interesting uh, instead of a, a Nazi personified. Um, uh, so so you know, the analysis of what an Ubermensch was, and by the way, that's precisely the way I kind of suggest that the Ubermensch ought to be interpreted, is really uh, the Kaufman interpretation of Nietzsche's Ubermensch and not the uh, more traditional uh, idea of the Ubermensch as the SS trooper, you know, killing all the, the muggles out there, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, by the way, remember that's J.K. Rowling's, I think, interpretation of it. Uh, when she, if you think of, of um, uh, Grindelwald as kind of a contemporary uh, fictional version of the Ubermensch, that's, that strikes me as a continuing uh, interplay in our Imaginarium. Um, so Walter Kaufman, pretty interesting. He died at 59 years old in 1980. So lots of folks are pretty upset that he died so young because some of his contemporaries lived till they were in their 90s and were still publishing at the same time. So he converted to Judaism. At age 11, kind of amazing. But uh, he's also uh, influential with regard to our American interpretation of existentialism. Uh, he's done several works uh, publishing uh, trans his translations of existentialists. Um, so existentialism, uh, Nietzsche's, uh, philosophy and Hegel's philosophy are all uh, interestingly interpreted by Walter Kaufman. Here's some of his original works. Nietzsche, philosopher, psychologist, antichrist. From Shakespeare to existentialism. Existentialism from Dostoevsky to Sartre. Critique of Religion and Philosophy, Tragedy and Philosophy, Hegel, a reinterpretation which was assigned reading for me in college, The Faith of a Heretic, What Can I Believe, How Should I Live, What Do I Hope, Without Guilt and Justice, Cain and Other Poems, Existentialism, Religion and Death, The Future of the Humanities, Religions in Four Dimensions, Discovering the Mind, a trilogy consisting of Goethe, Kant, and Hegel, Nietzsche, Heidegger, and Buber, Freud versus Alder and Jung. Man's Lot, a trilogy. It's mostly pictures of um, uh, trips that he made to India. By the way, one of the reasons he died so young was because he picked up a... Uh, uh, a um, What's it called? A, a small little creature that gets into you and eats your heart. What's it called? Parasite. parasite. Thank you. So he picked up a parasite while traveling in Africa. And it eventually destroyed his heart. So look at all of his translations. So lots of the books that you might read in philosophy, you're not just reading the original philosopher, you're reading a particular translation that demonstrates a particular interpretation of that original philosopher, right? So that's, that's pretty interesting. So what else? Lee Kuan Yew is, is interesting too, by the way. Let me, um, even though he's dead now,
taste of his intellect. It's absolutely amazing. Lee Kuan Yew is here. Singapore's founding father he served as prime minister for more than 30 years until 1990. He now serves as minister.